Hola, buenos días a todas y a todos. Bienvenidos una vez más a un evento realizado en el marco del Centro de Pensamiento de Empoderamiento y Liderazgo de la Mujer Steam en Steam en Colombia. Este evento se va a realizar en inglés. Esta es una breve introducción, un breve saludo en español, pero pues a partir de ahora todo el evento se realizará en inglés. Eh, esperamos que nos, esperemos que nos acompañen hasta el final del evento y que lo disfruten mucho. So, good morning everyone in Colombia and good morning, uh, sorry, good afternoon in Europe. Um, I'm very glad to be here today and to present and moderate this event, which uh, reunites three powerful and empowering, empowering women in, a, in the STEAM area who are working in higher education in Europe, in France, in Germany, and in Sweden. Professor Angelique uh, Rissons, welcome to this event. Professor Johanna Mietzik, yes, is welcome. And Professor Liliana Arevalo, bienvenida. It's a pleasure to have you here. Before you start with your uh, interaction in the event, I would like to welcome to our Dean, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Maria Alejandra Guzman Pardo, who is going to give a welcome speech to open the event. So please, uh, Professor uh, Maria Alejandra. Thank you, Maria Teresa. Uh, welcome everybody, I'm Maria Alejandra Guzman, Dean of the Faculty of Engineering of Universidad Nacional de Colombia. I also the director of the uh, uh, Thinking Center of, in Leadership and Empowerment of Colombian Women in STEM. It is a pleasure for me to welcome the professors Angelique Rison, Johanna Mirzik, and Liliana Arevalo, uh, in, that uh, will be talk about uh, three cases of European experiences in empowerment of uh, women in STEM. So welcome uh, very much, and uh, I hope that this will, this will be enriching for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professora Maria Alejandra. So now I think uh, it's time to, um, to start with our uh, guest speakers. So, uh, Professor Angelique Rizon, it's your turn. So, uh, the word is yours. Professor Angelique, do you hear me? No, thank you, Teresa. Okay. Maria Alexandra. So, I can now uh, begin the video. And I wanted before. Uh, uh, beginning, um, I wanted to share um, my screen uh, with the presentation, but I I don't have the right to share my screen. So maybe Teresa and or oh, Camille. Yeah, you... uh, maybe Paola. Uh, Paola, could you help us to to help the teacher to share the screen, please? Paola, or oh, alguien eh, si nos ayuda a darle los derechos a la profesora para para que comparta su creo que ahora puedes hacerlo Teresa sí el problema es que estoy desde el celular por el problema del micrófono en mi en mi computador entonces no sé cómo darle los derechos a la profesora hola si me, si me pones de concepción lo puedo hacer yo sí mejor por favor gracias profe. ya tienen los derechos O, o ponlo desde con anfitriones a las profesoras, por favor. Uh -huh. uh, just a minute, please, uh, minute, please uh, Angelique. No, I think you can uh, share the screen, Professor Angelique. Yeah, perfect. Right. I'm trying, yes, uh, I think it's okay. Yes, it's perfect. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your invitation uh, to this um, event. And it's a pleasure for me to, to, um, to participate and 
and introduce uh, my activities in my myself. So first of all, I wanted to introduce my activities at Isaiah Superos. So Isaiah Superos is um, the Institute of uh, Aeronautics and Space in France. So it's a French um, grand école uh, located in the south of uh, France in Toulouse. Toulouse is a main European pole of aeronautics in space uh, with uh, some um, companies, a lot of companies in this uh, domain. Um, in aeronautics, uh, you could see here Airbus, uh, Safran, Thales, etc., Liber Aerospace. And also we have some companies in space. Uh, Airbus Defense in Space, the French um, uh, Space Center, Thales Alenia, Alenia Space, etc. Uh, this um, um, town, the town of Toulouse, is um, uh, Paul, um, um, Paul, uh, close to one million of uh, inhabitants in France, and uh, there is a lot of students in this. Um, city. So uh, Superhero is, um, is an old institute. It uh, has been founded uh, in 1909 uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, since uh, more than one century um, the training uh, uh, is dedicated to a pluridisciplinary uh, uh, training but uh, for focalized on aeronautics and space. Uh, so uh, Toulouse uh, have a lot of, uh, of uh, university in France. It's the third uh, town of uh, university of students. And uh, there is a main uh, PhD um, uh, school, doctoral school. Um, now, uh, Superhero, uh, is our Superhero is, uh, as uh, I told before, a multidisciplinary um, institute. Uh, so we have um, five uh, research and training department in scientific domains. So aeronautic, energetic and propulsion, uh, mechanics, structure and materials, aerospace vehicles design and control, and complex system engineering, and also electronics, optronics, and signal processing. Uh, there is also one department uh, dedicated to the training program. Uh, this is the humanities and languages department. Now, uh, the training program uh, composed of uh, several uh, kinds of uh, training program. So uh, the first uh, training program is uh, the high selective uh, program on uh, engineer um, uh, French Grand École, so engineer super Grand École. Uh, and also there is an international uh, master program in aerospace engineering, the advanced master program, and also a professional um, uh, block re release training uh, master program. So uh, the students uh, are uh, in half time uh, in course uh, institute and the second half time uh, they are in a company. Now, I will introduce myself. So who am I? Uh, which training? Uh, I will answer two questions. The first one is who am I? What is my position today and my responsibilities? And the second question will be how to reach this position. So I'm professor at Isao Supero. Uh, and uh, I'm full professor. So I have a PhD and HDR. Uh, it is a French diploma. So my topics uh, in research is photonics, micro photonics. And now I'm manager of a research group, Pompa Photonics, Antennas, Microwave, and Plasma. So this research group is um, address different topics, uh, uh, but these topics are close to the uh, background of electromagnetism. So we worked on electromagnetism and declined this electromagnetism in 
microwave domain and in photonics domain. Uh, also, I have some uh, academic responsibilities, responsibilities, and I'm the head of the second year training program of Superhero, so the Superhero engineer. Uh, and also, uh, I have some uh, responsibility, responsibilities in the doctoral school, uh, and I participate, I'm a member of uh, the executive executive uh, committee. Uh, so uh, my uh, doctoral school is uh, JETS, so electrical electronics uh, engineering for telecommunications and uh, else. Also, I participate to the scientific uh, societies. So I'm IEEE member. I participated to organization of, uh, of conference. Also, I'm uh, in uh, different uh, committees for uh, conference and uh, for uh, paper publications. So I reviewed some paper. I participate also to uh, different uh, defense of PhD. The evaluation of, of PhD to uh, deliver the, the, the PhD diploma. And also, I'm a treasurer of, uh, in, in the council board of uh, ISROS. ISROS is uh, uh, an international society on reliabilities of uh, optoelectronics devices system. So, how did I? In fact, I have uh, an education, uh, several education, uh, uh, two bachelor, double bachelor in uh, chemical physics, also a master and a PhD uh, in microwave and photonics. And also um, I have uh, this um, French diploma, which is HDR, ability to manage research. Uh, which is a diploma to allow us to be a full professor. In France, with a PhD, we um, uh, can be a professor assistant, but we cannot be full professor. So if we have to defend a second PhD, but it is a state PhD, it's typical to the France, to have the possibility to, uh, to have a position of a professor. And also I have some qualification, other qualifications. Uh, and uh, especially uh, since a uh, few years, I um, obtained some certificates in uh, soft skills, um, uh, especially sophrology and yoga, because I'm in my position, I have to, um, to manage people and I have to develop some knowledge in uh, humanities and also advise some students, PhD students, and also my colleagues. Uh, so that's why the human knowledge and the human skills are very important in our position. And also I list my soft skills because our soft skills makes difference. And this is what we could develop um, uh, along our career to, to be a, a good researcher, but also a good manager, a human manager, and as an assertive manager. So it is very important to make the difference, also to be in good agreement with our convictions, our ethics, and uh, balance between the personal life and the professional life, be able to make shoes, maybe it's difficult to choose and listen your instinct. So it's the end for, for me. Thank you for your attention. And uh, so uh, if you have the question, I think it will be after the presentation of my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Angelique. Um, yeah, um, I think the question is much better if we leave them for, uh, for the end of the, of the talk. So now is the turn of uh, Professor Johanna Mjertzik. Yeah, I'm Johanna Mjertzik. Thank you very much to be here in um, this discussion or in this kind of virtual uh, um, podium uh, for uh, how we 
uh, arrange um, to be a professor in um, STEM uh, sciences. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure for me to be here. And um, I'm today, um, I'm professor of three years at the University in Bremen, in Germany, that's in the northern part of, of Germany, nearby the uh, North Sea. And the university in, in Bremen is, uh, yeah, has a very strong technical orientation. Here are around 20,000 students studying um, physics, uh, mathematics, um, informatics, um, also some, some ocean sciences, biology, um, and uh, economical sciences, et cetera, and also electrical engineering. That's where I'm coming from, um, the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Physics. Um, and since three years here, um, uh, as a full professor for automation technology for electricity power systems, and um, yeah, so I'm quite young here in Bremen. I have a small group of nine scientific staff members and um, three um, technical uh, staff members, and we just um, yeah building up here a new research group concerning the automation technology for electrical power systems. I have also a small um, presentation prepared. Um, maybe you can give the um, monitor free for me as well. I think you have already the permission. I think you all. Ah, yeah, I see it now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So I share it with you. Okay, I think you can see it now. Um, I have to yes. make, it, make it a little bit smaller. So, okay. Yeah, um, how I became a professor and what are the challenges? You see here my, my curriculum, um, but um, the, the things between um, the sentences are not given there. Um, also, my father was an engineer. It was not obviously that I start up a study in engineering. So um, for me as, as, as a woman at home, it was not, not natural to do this. And it was a, a small, a small um, fight. When I was in the um, gymnasium, uh, when I made my abitur, my baccalaureate, uh, to become, um, yeah, to have the right to go to a university, um, I was on a um, girls' high school. And I, that's for me very, very relevant because um, um, I'm, Nowadays, um, I'm an advocate that girls and boys uh, should be taught separately in STEM um, subjects. Because I think I never be, became a professor if I don't uh, visit this uh, girls' school. Because here I was under, under people who, for, for all of them was naturally that I have interest in mathematics and in physics and um, it was very very important for me because for my for my family side it was not not obviously to do that and also I came from a so-called um, educated middle class family it was also not um, obviously that um, I study at a university as a woman, uh, as a woman. Instead, my father wanted me to study, if I should study technician, to become a technician um, at a so-called technical college, or we call it now um, an University of Applied Science, because he thought I should be finished quickly and um, to start up a family. Um, luckily, I, I was strong enough to um, yeah, I defend my, my position and I start my 
um, study in electrical engineering at the University of Technology in Darmstadt. That's the the um, the, um, yeah, the the city where I'm born. It's uh, in the south of Frankfurt, and it's a quite famous university. And I studied there um, electrical power engineering, and I became there my degree as a diploma engineer or master master engineer. Um, I was always interested uh, in solar energy and in renewable energy resources, and um, that was a very strong driver for me to um, to say, okay, I want to be there a specialist, and I like to to become a doctor. So I was looking for a, um, a position for a PhD position, and I was lucky that I got a scholarship um, from the state Hessen. Hessen is, is the state where Darmstadt is the city inside. And um, it was an, an, a scholarship, a PhD scholarship, especially for women, for women who had already family or start up a new, uh, new, new um, education and so on. And there were not so many women, and so I was lucky to to get the scholarship for the first two years, and I started um, at the university in Kassel with my PhD, first in the Institute of Renewable Energy uh, Research, and later I uh, become a research assistant at um, the laboratory um, um, of my, my, we call it, uh, doctor father, uh, Professor Kleinkauf, and here I did my research on renewable energy resources and um, power um, electronics, and I developed some new topologies for um, photovoltaic uh, inverters. Um, that was an, that was a time for me where I say, okay, uh, there were a lot of of guys around me, and um, all these guys had a lot of experience in practical experience in power electronics, but not me. Yeah, that was yeah, not the first time that I that I have a soldier sol uh, to solve something and to build up something, but um, I had no experience in power electronics. And I was very frustrated in this time. It was a hard time. The, half, the first half or one year was very hard. Um, and there were a lot of friends, um, male friends um, from from my study, and they said, "Oh, Johanna, you you can do it because you are already an engineer and you have a quite good salmon and you know it everything." And these guys around you, they yeah, they are powering up and to show how good they are, but they are not better than you. And that that helps me to say, "Okay, I I can do it," and I trust. Got then the same experience like my my male um, colleagues. So after my PhD, um, I um, um, yeah I learned my for, former husband. Um, he was in the Netherlands, um, and um, so I I went to the Netherlands first as a postdoc um, at the uh, University of Technical Technical University in Eindhoven, and then. Yeah, I climbed up the um, the academic career in in the Netherlands. So I became assistant professor and associate professor in two thousand eight. In all this time, um, it was for my colleagues obviously that I a woman in engineer. Uh, I'm a woman in engineering. So engineering, and um, that was fine because also my boss were very, um, yeah, um, did a lot of promotion for myself. It was a quite good time and I had no big um, barriers to, to climb up. So it was um, a nice, very nice time. And in 2009, I started up to become um, a full professor in Germany. So I, I went back to Germany and I became a full professor in energy efficiency at the Dortmund University of Technology. And there was uh, for the next nine years professor at this university. In the time, I want to make a career at the university as well. So I want to, to become a higher salary, a higher position and so on. 
and if you want to to become in higher position um you you have to apply for another professorship at in another university and that's what i did and i apply for a professor a higher professor position here in in bremen but i did it with with the view on uh, my vision okay I, I um, go to the to the rectorate at the university and I say, look, I have this position, but I want to stay in Dortmund. And um, there were a lot of um, political reasons. Um, at the end, what I didn't expect was I was the only woman in the Department of Electrical Engineering and because of political reasons, which are not really fair and clear, they say to me, oh, then leave the university, go to Bremen. And that's what I did. Uh, in 2018, I, I went to the university in Bremen and I'm the, here the head of the Institute of Automation Technology. Um, I, during my study and um, until I became a professor, it was yeah, for my environment, normal that I'm a woman. Um, I had no no fights, very 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 significant fights. It starts when I become became a professor, and then I was the yeah, the front the front woman of my department or the front woman of my my uh, working group, and then I got a lot of um, wind against me. And um, that's what what I yeah didn't expect, and I I understood then that all the um, bosses uh, in Eindhoven and in Kassel they keep this uh, wind which is against me away from me this time. And now I have yeah now I'm I'm the head of a group, and I have yeah I have to fight against the um, the wind. Um, I was asked to give an overview about the policies in Germany to empower women in, in STEM. We have several uh, tools. We have, for example, girls' days at the university where young girls, um, also boys, can come to the university. We have their own, uh, camp like a campus event and they can come to the university and they can learn a lot of how it is to study engineering. Um, different states in Germany um, have various programs, programs on female professors at the universities um, in order to stimulate the recruitment of women as professors. So they say to the department where is an open position. So if you recruit a woman for this position, you will get money or you just, uh, um, we will pay a lot for the equipment of this um, professorship and so on. Then we have, um, of course, a lot of equal opportunity officers, uh, it doesn't matter if you uh, will hire a secretary or a professor, you have in this committee always someone from the university and or from your own faculty uh, who is looking after the equal opportunity. We have also um, equality programs at university. Uh, or at the individual um, faculties where the faculty set up a program uh, with some ideas in order to get more female students, in order to um, empower students to become a PhD student and so on. So they, they have, if it's the, if it's the uh, policy of the university that every faculty has this kind of program then every faculty is obliged to do and in most of this uh, is also combined with a cascade model in, in science that is um, um, according to which the target for the uh, proposition of women is based on the proposition of women in the careers level directly below it so 
there are um, goal percentages uh, where they say our goal is to increase the numbers of students, of female students from, I would say, um, 6% to 8% uh, in the next five years. Um, and then we want to increase the PhD uh, amount of, of female PhDs from 2% to 4%. And we want to have for, in, for our professors, uh, not only one female professor, but in the next five years, maybe two. Um, that is meant under this cascade model. Then we have, of course, many universities have such called diversity vice presidents. Diversity for yeah, not only for for the for um, the, the equality uh, programs, but also for other, other uh, yeah other diversity aspects. Then we you find in Germany some mentoring programs. So female professors are mentors for female PhDs. Um, I don't know if this is very successful. I was in this 11 years since I'm professor in Germany. I was once a mentor for a PhD um, student from the informatics. Then we have our German um, Research Foundation, and um, they have a very strong gen gender equality program policy, especially if you want to have a graduate school or if you follow a special research program, they ex ex yeah, ex are expecting that you do a lot for increasing the numbers of female PhDs and that you build up uh, workshops and so on um, for, for awareness of the gender and equality issue. Then um, a lot of universities uh, have programs for the re um, reconcile work and family life that's becoming more and more established. We have also a lot of awards that is a very family friendly university. And also um, it's also coming up um, kind of workshops for managers, for, for bosses, for, for professors to uh, increase their aware for gender and equality issues. There's a lot of things which are, which which happens in, in Germany, I I collect you some facts. Um, so I start with the, the positive facts, uh, the percentage of female first year students in electrical engineering or information technology um, was in 2008 below 10% and now it's um, risen to around 70% uh, in 2019. And also for the female graduates in um, this um, discipline, um, we have an increased percentage from 8.9% in 2008 up to 13.4% in um, 2019 of female graduates. But the patriarchal conditions are still continuing in some disciplines and in the industry. So the, the barriers are still um, existing. Uh, and that you see in the percentage of female professors at, uh, in, in, at Germany's university or universities of applied sciences, they are still below um, 25%, even if we have the professor uh, programs and so on. And what we see as well, and that is since we have this, since 15 years, since we have a new uh, salary system in the university, the female professors have more than 25% less salary than the male. 
um, professor, uh, professor. So um, two weeks ago, we had the equal pay day. So we have here an equal pay gap between female and male professors. Um, of course, a lot of faculties and universities, they have already their, their gender programs and so on, but there is no control authority if this equality goals are reached. So no compliance has no consequences. Um, and that is maybe also a, a reason why we have still such less um, female professors at the university. This kind of female professor program, which I mentioned before, um, causes into 1.8% more female professors. Um, and, uh, but there are still yeah, deficits, even if we have such, such programs, even if we have an, um, uh, an award for the family friendly uh, university, we have the deficits in support of female scientists with regard to children and family and um, with regard to international or anyway to mobility. So that's what I want to present, and maybe we have here some, um, yeah, basis for the later discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor um, Johanna. So now is the turn of uh, Professora Liliana Arevalo. Uh, welcome, Professora, and so the the word is yours. Hello, uh, I'm trying to share my screen, but I think I have some. You have the permissions, I think. Here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, now. Okay, perfect. So first of all, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me to this interesting uh, discussion and lecture. And uh, well, it's a honor to be able to present something about myself uh, to my colleagues from National University of Colombia. Uh, well, my name is Liliana Arevalo. I'm a senior principal engineer at Hitachi ABB Power Grid. And I'm also an adjunct associate professor at Uppsala University in the area of discharge physics. So I would like to present first where I'm mainly located. I'm mainly located in Ludvika, Sweden, what we can call a place for the world center of high voltage. It's an area of 516,000 square meters where you can have your high voltage lab and your high voltage dream. Uh, you can find uh, different areas where people is developing and also doing equipment that will be used in the future to transmit electricity to everybody. Um, so here you can see a beautiful picture of the area where I'm working every day. Uh, we have many high voltage laboratories, uh, ultra high voltage labs, current labs, and of course, uh, many production areas. And uh, with this, uh, part of my work uh, in uh, industry has been to help to develop technologies to transmit clean energy all around the world. And uh, we have, uh, as you see in these pictures, developed a bulk transmission of electricity and light transmission of electricity. And some of them are mainly used nowadays in Europe and future in Americas for transmission of energy that are located in the sea, like offshore winds, but also when we have power very far away from sources like the water that is located very far away from big cities. So one example is the biggest 
high voltage DC link that has been built in China, 12 gigawatts, uh, 1100 kV HVDC. So among my responsibilities is part to develop the insulation and how all this equipment can work together. But another part of my work is to work with universities to develop based knowledge. And in my case, I work with Uppsala University to understand based knowledge on discharge physics, to understand how a discharge develop and propagate, to understand how a lightning can initiate and can strike to this kind of equipment. So they can be built in a way that they will be able to withstand uh, over voltages and over currents. So who am I? Uh, well, one of part of who am I is part of my history in universities. Uh, I study at the National University of Colombia in Bogota, uh, electrical engineering, and I also did my master degree in high voltage technology in the National University of Colombia. After that, I got the opportunity with a scholarship to travel to Sweden and to do my field leak, that's philosophy licentiate on electrical discharges at Uppsala University. And uh, my scholarship by, was sponsored by ABB Power Systems, and they sponsored my continuation and finalization of my PhD degree on engineering science in atmospheric discharges. After that, I got the opportunity to join ABB Power Grids as a R&D specialist, and I grew up in the company to become senior principal engineer on HVDC electrical insulation. So I'm responsible for the insulation of the HVDC station and for the future on what do we develop on these areas. Since 2015, uh, I joined as an adjunct associate professor of electrical discharges at the Department of Engineering at the Division of Electricity at Uppsala University, where I have two PhD students at this moment working on, and we have work with other PhD students that has already uh, graduated. But uh, one of the key questions in this uh, workshop was to present how did I reach all these stages? So I would like to present another part of myself. I have a, and then go to this part, how do I manage to reach this point? I have more than 78 publications in conference journals and international standards. Majority of them have been based on my work on research and development and the work with PhD students as well as the work in the industry. Uh, I'm a author and co-author of more than seven patents that are worldwide. And I'm part of different IC and CGRE groups. These are standardization groups that uh, determine recommendations for how our electricity system will look like. How do we do insulation coordination? How do we protect against lightning strike or how the atmospheric behaves? As a, something that I wanted to highlight, which I think it is very important for ladies and uh, for females in this sector, because we are very few, is that uh, I have been a ward and um, this recognition helps to open and inspire others. And I hope this will inspire you as well. Uh, in 2009, uh, when I didn't have so big expectations, I had I received the Young Scientist Award by the European Working Party on Static Electricity when I was presenting my work on discharges in gaps of some meters of distance. 
In 2010, I received a Young Scientist Award by the Scientific Committee of the International Conference on Lightning Protection, which is a group mainly dominated by male. And uh, the recognition was towards my contributions uh, due uh, to lightning discharges. In 2016, uh, after uh, very hard work in the standardization, I was recognized by IEC, uh, receiving the 19 OC award that usually is given to specialists for the contribution in the standardization. And uh, one of the awards I'm for nominations I'm really proud is that in 2020, last year, I was nominated to the Swedish Power Woman of the Year. This is a recognition that Sweden has started to recognize women in the area of engineering on the power electricity and to be able to lift the profile and help to other people to get inspired. So how did I start or where everything starts? And I, I must say that I was privileged because I was born in a country that probably didn't have the same equality, but by the year when I was born, my family was majority dominated by women. 82% of my family is women. And the, the fight of equality has been done by my grandmother and by my mother and my aunt, but not really by me. I was teach that we all are equal and I was teach that I, I always could do it and that I need, didn't need a man to help me to do it, which uh, to my country is not so common. Uh, of course, I was inspired always, always inspired in science and math. And one thing that it is really important, it is to be inspired by curiosity. And uh, there was always the opportunity and encouragement of curiosity. I don't know if you can hear that it is raining very hard here. So I'm sorry if my sound is not good at this moment. So, well, I will continue. Um, there are, there, in engineering, there are many challenges that can become strengths. Uh, when I joined uh, the electrical engineering career, uh, we were a group of 150 men, three women. At the end, we graduate two of them. Uh, one of the interesting things was that we were divided, split in three groups. 50 men, one woman in each group, 49 men. But that challenge helped to create a new friendship to get to know better how men work. So it creates more strength than weakness. And say it creates the moments to May make friendship and equity between us. Uh, other things that were a little bit challenging is when you are the only woman in the class. So sometimes I was the only one in the classroom. And I knew that I always will be questioned. Once I got a question in a laboratory and uh, the comments was not that good for my professor, but it was always, let's listen the feminine side of the room. Uh, and what I learned from all this questioning is that I had always to be prepared. I had always to be ready. And that the secret was to be able to stand up and tell to my professor, this is how we are going to do. This is 
how it is calculated. So during my undergraduate career, I was several times in front of the board presenting and spelling things because I was always questioned. Uh, I thought that was finished after a while because I didn't experience that during my career, not either during my PhD. But I can tell you that I had a very hard time when I joined a IC society because I was the only lady in my working group. And to get respect takes time. And at the beginning, I was hey, all the time said Miss Arevalo. In the emails, everybody was replied doctor, and I was Miss Arevalo, but I was doctor as well. And nowadays, after one or two years of showing that I can, I have the knowledge. Uh, I'm called Dr. Arevalo. But uh, what I want to tell you is that these differences between men and women exist at all possible levels. Uh, one of the advantages of moving from a country that has a different culture to another culture is what they gave me the opportunity to move to, to Sweden. It's raining very hard here. Sorry if you hear some disturbances in my microphone. Um, the work in Sweden is completely different. And the difference is that it's not only equality, it's equity. And you learn to know that everybody has the same rights. It's not dependable on your title. It's not dependable on how high is your academic knowledge. It's not dependable on how much money you do. In Sweden, you all are the same, which it means you don't use titles. You don't say Professor Marcus or Dr. Arevalo. I'm Liliana to everybody independently of what I do. And I'm professor and I'm senior principal engineer. There is also something very important of the policies in Sweden. And you will notice that, for example, <clears throat> for being part of a PhD committee, there is a regulation and there is a need to always have a woman. So you cannot be only men to take a decision if a person has reached its level to be a doctor. So as a professor, you have to look for someone, lady, with the knowledge to get this and be able to evaluate your doctorate student. Same level of equality I have found in ABB Hitachi Power Group. We have 53 different nationalities in the company and all of them need to interact in the same level without discrimination, without differences on where are you from, if you, what do you believe, what are your academic titles, or what is your economical level, which it makes a big difference. And you notice the differences more when you have moved from a country where there is a very big difference between society and economical class. Nevertheless, everything is not perfect. You always will face challenges. And among those challenges, is the interaction with different nationalities. And in this interaction of different nationalities, you will face different cultures. And in these different cultures, there will be people that have grown up under a patriarchal society that has quite a lot of big challenges to believe that a woman can tell you what to do. Or 
when you have to travel to other countries and you have to show that you are the boss, but nobody wants to listen to you because in that culture, you are not accept, accepted as a boss because you are a lady. So this is a worldwide issue. Of course, you always will find people of different kinds that know all people that do not want to do anything, but this is independent on gender equality. And something that helps a lot to reach the level one can reach or to pursue your path is mental. And uh, I would like to say that I have the privilege to always be mentored by great people. At the beginning, as I told, the beginner was my family. Then in my path in the university, I found a mentor that also showed me what could be a path, how to be a researcher, and uh, help you to make connections because mentoring is about motivation, advice, direction, support, and coaching. And during my university in Sweden, uh, of course, I found other mentors and models and people that wanted to help me. And uh, in the industry, I must tell you that you are not alone if you really find people that can help you and give you the hand from beginning to senior. So in the industry where I have joined, I have found these two mentors or this mentor that you see here in picture. And it's a senior person that has helped me in each step. It's this, this mentor helps you to think to visualize what you want to do in the future. And it can be that you have planned a path, a straight forward up to the goal. But in reality, this path will have its up and down. But the best is to never give up. And uh, I would like to encourage a majority of young people if they have joined to this uh, presentation to, to look for a mentor. In my case, if you see my path from undergraduate to become a senior engineer uh, and professor, uh, the models are men. But that doesn't mean that you will not learn much from them. It's people that have been open to help all the path and try to share knowledge and experience. And uh, this is very important to continue to succeed. It's always good to be in the shoulders of someone else to build big. And um, I was also asked about what are the gender equality policy goals in Sweden? And I must tell you that, yeah, Sweden uh, has to start long, long ago with this journey. Uh, the term of gender equality started in 1970s and the first law of equal gender was done in 1979 where the idea was to have equality of men and women in the at work so nowadays the gender equality policy is for women and men to have the same opportunities, rights, and responsibilities in all areas of life. So women and men have same amount of time available to be home with the kids. It's not only ladies that are at home with the kids. Uh, the men work at home. I mean, my partner works at home as well as I do. So we put exactly the same. We work 50-50 and we do everything for keeping our rights the same. So gender equality policy goals, uh, it has six 
at this moment in the 2021, six different points. One is equal division of power and influence. So women and men need uh, to have right, same rights and opportunities uh, for the citizens. Economy gender equality. So women and men must have the same opportunities and conditions as regards to paid work, which give economic independence. Uh, gender equal education. And uh, this is for everybody must have the same opportunities and conditions with regards to education, study, options, and personal development. Gender equality distribution of unpaid housework and provision of care. And this is something that is already imbued in the mentality of the Swedish people. Uh, gender equal health. So all have the same conditions for a good health and be offered care on equal terms. There is no discrimination. And uh, another thing that uh, appears here is violence against women that should stop. Women and men, girls and bo boys must have the same rights and access to physical integrity. Um, this what it is important to say is that uh, this in Sweden, it has a ministry, there is a person in charge of these questions, and uh, it has this, it's part of all day working life. In the case of engineering, there is a still certain uh, differences, the balance is not the same. Uh, there is 30% of women are working in the energy industry. So it is not 50 50. Uh, well, and there are many policies and many groups that have been built in order to help and encourage uh, young people, young women to join uh, the STEAM area. So you can see there is this, what is called Kraft Kivinona. And this is an association that was built in 2015 to show women and put it visible in the energy industry. And at the same time to reduce this bill that everybody has, the picture that everybody has that there are no women in the energy industry. And uh, the idea is to promote more women as a leadership and more women in the energy sector, in not only in the levels of senior specialists, but also in the role leaders as CEO of different companies. And uh, there is another network in Sweden that is called Technik Kivinor, and uh, this is uh, more broad and more, all technique areas uh, you can join. And uh, this is a network where you can get advice even when you don't know which profession you are going to take. Uh, many, many young ladies write and ask, I'm thinking on this and that, should I try to become electrical engineer? And then many people become mentored to these, to these young ladies and give advisors. So, this is more or less what I wanted to share with you. Uh, at the level of universities, I will say the, the feeling is like 50-50 in Sweden. There is no big difference, uh, in the, at least in the engineering department that I belong. And the ladies, students are also becoming more uh, circa 50% of the of the number of students of engineering. So thank you so much. And uh, well, looking forward for more discussions. Thank you, Professor Liliana. Um, it's pretty interesting how things work in uh, Sweden. Um, I think it's like totally different from other European countries even, right? So um, Professor Angelique Erison um, left us because he had other uh, appointments, but uh, thank you, Professor Angelique.
for being with us this first hour, hour of the event. And now, now is the turn of the questions in charge of our students. So um, I don't know which one of you um, could like to start, maybe, I don't know, Camila, or uh, I don't know which one, but please let's start and let's address the questions to Professor Johanna and to Professor Liliana. I see that Professor Angelique is still there, so I don't know if you um, have other questions, but once again, thank you very much for, um, for joining the, the event. Thank you too. Hi, I'm sorry, I have to leave you. Uh, but I wanted to, to insist on the difficulties to reach um, a, a job and uh, to insist also on uh, the importance uh, to find the balance uh, between uh, the soft skills, the humanity skills, and also uh, the scientific skills. And uh, even uh, we come from modest families with a... Um, uh, with, uh, uh, low financial support. If we want, you could, we could um, uh, find, uh, we could reach uh, to uh, um, obtain the PhD and uh, and more than that. And uh, and also, um, so sorry, I have to leave you. So yeah, so <laughs> it's okay. To, uh, Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, thank you very much and thank you for the message. For sure, um, if we uh, want, for sure we can reach uh, a PhD and we can reach also a very successful professional career. So thank you for your words, uh, Professor um, Angelique. And so now it's the question turn. I don't know, maybe Camila, you want to start or I don't know who, uh, who of you is going to, to start the, the question round. Hello, Laura. <laughs> we don't hear you, Laura. No. Uh, no. no. Could Perfect. you listen so, to me? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, good day to all of you. We are glad to have this space to talk to you about women's empowerment in STEM. Um, but before we begin, I, will, I would like to introduce my colleagues. Um, they are Maria Camila Mejia, Maria Daniela Torres, and me, Laura Andrea Vega. Um, during, during this second part of the panel, we will ask you some questions uh, that we have prepared from the Women in Engineering University group. So we hope that all of us uh, will, find them, will find them rewarding. So, um, the first question is, um, in which professional areas do you consider there are still gender gaps? So both of you have uh, mentioned some facts according to this topic, but um, uh, maybe you could, uh, you want to add some uh, other comments? So Professor uh, Joanna? So as I understood you, you, you ask where I see um, um, yeah, the, uh, male, female gap in, in, the, um, uh, in, in which field? Or could you, could you um, uh, repeat your question again? Laura? Okay, um, of course. Um, in which professional areas do you consider there are still gender gaps? Um, I see it um, in, in, in all um, engineering um, uh, fields that you have uh, a very big gender gap. So um, I show you that, that yeah, in electrical engineering we have at the moment um, as I, I look through the statistics, um, around 17%, um, but also in, in mechanical engineering, um, where it's better, where you can, where you have more um, female students and professionals is, is in mathematics and in, in physics departments or in physics directions. 
here you have 30 up to 40 percent, nearly 50, 50. But in the in the hard engineering field, yeah, there we have a big gap for um, uh, with women. Yeah. Okay, so thanks for your. That's, that's it for uh, Germany, no? Um, um, sorry. That's 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 for Germany. Uh, it's in other countries. It's different. Yeah, we we are in Germany. Okay, we yeah. are in 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 in, in, in totally um, uh, male uh, focused engineering country. And so it's diff maybe different to other countries. Of course, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I, we would like to know the opinion of um, Liliana. Yes. Um, well, Laura, I think uh, I agree with Johanna. And nowadays, it's increasing the number of females joining engineering programs in Sweden. But nevertheless, the dominated area in industry is male. Uh, we can notice that electrical engineers have different areas. And maybe in power electronics, we see more ladies. And uh, in other areas like uh, control and protection, more ladies. But if you go to high voltage technologies, there is no one. If you go to mechanics, also uh, mechanical engineering. So the dominance is male and uh, it requires more females to join. And uh, going away from engineering and uh, science, we should also see our health system that when you see a nurse, people think directly on a lady. And uh, there is also an equality there because there are men who also are nurse and are working to become a nurse. So this is a kind of paradigm we have in our minds because of the previous models were given to us. So yeah, that's my opinion, Laura. Okay, I see that Joanna wants to say something. What I, what I see is and where also I, I, I remember the policy in, in Dortmund is also to get more female stu students is in the combination of health, um, renewable energy and technology. Here is, is, um, is a high potential where, where we see that we can um, get more female students or female um, also maybe in, 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 in the working field. I think Li, uh, Liliana is there. What was the work was the working floor <laughs> is uh, more the expert in um, but I think the combination of health or of something which is related to climate to um, to get a better world, um, I think here we we have an increase of of female uh, students and later um, engineers. Okay. Okay. So. No. <laughs> okay. no, thank you, Laura, uh, and thank you. Uh, thanks both of you for your answers. So I'd like to go now with the second one. Um, and we've uh, talked a little about uh, the initiatives for getting uh, more women to work in this STEM field. Uh, Joanna mentioned some uh, of these initiatives. So I'd like to ask you both, do you agree with the promotion of scholarships awarded only to women in STEM? And should we encourage these initiatives in Colombia? Are they applicable to, to our context? So I'd like to start with Liliana, if that's okay. Yes. Well, I, I think we are in, the, in different countries. We are not in the same level as I explained in my presentation. You can meet different cultures and the background play a big role. 
And uh, in Colombia, equity and equality for women is uh, still with a need of quite a lot of support. And uh, definitely, I believe there should be a scholarships for women to help them to demonstrate, to go forward, become doctor, become professors. Uh, but at the same time, I, I want to say that in countries where equality is reaching the same, I find sometimes difficulties when you are applying for a scholarship or a job, when you have same level of knowledge and have had same opportunities that it is the female who get the scholarship and not the male, because this is them becoming a problem in the opposite side. So from my point of view, what we should look is more like equity. Are you coming with the same opportunities as the person that is coming from point A? Can you be measured equally or not? Then just call it scholarships for women. Because sometimes when you are in a society where everything is equal and you have been selected as a woman, people can start thinking about that was because she is a lady. And it is not because she has all behind to help her to get that opportunity. So for, I think we, we should try to put it in, in that level, but I definitely agree that in Colombia, it needs to be pushed farther and there should be bigger, higher opportunities for ladies to become part of uh, engineering programs. I mean, when I presented in my case, I was 1% of the group, just 1%. And uh, this needs to increase to, to levels like 40, 30, 50 percent. That should be the goal. And the only way to get this goal is to help ladies to join these programs, to get a bigger part of the portion of the opportunities if there is this kind of divisions. I mean, as we, I know that if you are from an indigenous group, you get some certain and number of scholarships. So there should be something similar in Colombia for women as well. Okay, thank you, Liliana. You're absolutely right. And unfortunately, the numbers haven't changed much. So we need more initiatives uh, mm -hmm. towards that. Uh, and now I would like to know Joanna's point of view about this topic. Yeah, I agree uh, with Liliana. Uh, if, you, if you're living in a country with um, yeah, less if you, um, yeah, equality between the genders, um, I think you need support. Um, and, but, but I'm asked myself now, um, uh, of course, if, if everything's equal, so we have 50, 50% also in the engineers and, and everywhere. And it's, it's, it's obviously in the society that male and females are equal, then you don't need it. That's correct. But, I don't know any society where it is the case that everyone everyone is equal. Yeah, that's that's um, that's, that's the point. So I believe in programs. Um, I believe I, I myself I had I had a, a scholarship for women, and um, I was happy about this because this opened me the possibility to become a doctor and to start up my my academic career until I become a, a professor. So that's that's very, very important to have this. Um, and of course we have to look in which in which uh, prof in which field and in which discipline you will have disciplines where you have more women, for example, to become a nurse or to become yeah, um, 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 how do you call this? Um, um, uh, the nurses who, who help children on earth. 
So that I know, I know two two males who want to be there and to 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 have this job as well. And they 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 are living between between women, and uh, they have the same pro problems which I have. Uh, vice versa. So I I believe in 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 such such um, programs to support women to become um, an engineer. Um, even I come from a girls' school. Um, I have I have friends who were better in mathematics and phys physics than me, and they don't study it uh, because they told me, oh, I don't like to study this because there are a lot of men around me and the behavior of men are different and you have to fight and they are like like uh, cocks and um, uh, so on so um, I think there should be also programs in order to um, how to survive in in a um, male environment also later for jobs yeah that you that you how that you understand how men behave how women behave and how you how you um behave yourself um in in order to survive if you have a man in front of you for for who who is who think he is better yeah he can do everything it's very easy for men to show this and to to um um uh, to yeah to to uh, I, d I don't know the English word for this <laughs> but to to um, to show our oh, to think I'm I'm the best yeah and we female yeah we females are more thinking yeah um, do I'm the best or but I don't know it immediately and and I think women need a kind of training. Um, also, also during during the study or so on to to um, become also more self confidence and to say okay I don't know it yet but I will I will get it later so I will get the same um, um, uh, knowledge or the same position or the same um, uh, quality like like a male um, uh, student or a professional. Thank you, thank you so much. I completely agree. So as Professor Liliana told us, it's crucial to inspire, okay? So I want to know how to inspire girls to study STEAM careers. Um, Joanna, <laughs> could you begin? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's what I ask myself. Um, it's, it's uh, we were thinking, yeah, maybe to go to school, um, to go to um, to look there to, to show what what our profession is. Um, um, that's not only uh, tech, technical things, but we can also be uh, develop um, really good things for the society, for the health, and so on. Um, to bring more understandable uh, or knowledge um, to to young women. Um, also in, in, in school time, but that's, that's hard because no one in, in our school, uh, no teachers are interested that I, I come, I tried this several times in Dortmund, but there was no interest from, from this part. Um, I think we have, we have from, from, also from the DLR in, in Germany, we have um, some, some small, edu yeah, small education units for, for, for young people to, to give them more interest, but this is just a drop of water to, to a hot stone. Yeah, that's, that's not changing our, our society, but this is a big, yeah, a big issue, how, how, the, how we can change the, the, um, so, yeah, the thinking of the society. And even now I, I see from young, young women um, you know, when I'm now now about 50, 50 years old, so I I had a I, I, I'm not 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 in this emancipation um, group, but but I I saw a lot of emancipation of 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 women in my society. But now with some young 
um, girls, I see that they want to follow. Oh, they are dreaming of of an of um, um, uh, to follow the 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 husband. Yeah, that that is an it's an now upcoming um, um, uh, flow in 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 young in young um, women thinking. So I think that is very very hard to get how to motivate young women to to come in, in engineering. Thank you. Completely agree. <laughs> Liliana? Yeah, well, it is a um, very tough question because uh, well, I think this should start at home and start also from ground to school. And the issue is that majority of people at ground to school hate mathematics and start, uh, don't like to inspire the engineering. No. So it is how to educate parents and how as a teachers can we change in a way that we can inspire, inspire little kids to, to see that engineering is something interesting. Uh, of course, this is also in hand with the level of knowledge of the parents. Because uh, depending on the society, uh, some parents are educating kids or do not have the time to educate the kids or discuss about why it is raining. Uh, you hear uh, lightning, you cannot clarify, uh, this is because there is electrical charge and then you have to describe what is an electrical charge and try to make some kids that get inspired of that sound. <laughs> So in Sweden, what I have seen is that many schools organize visits to the university. So in the university, we have the opportunity to show them that this is a high voltage lab. And here we put a small house and we put a lightning. So this is what happens when you have a lightning at home. But how effective is this if it is happening once in three years? To a kid, it is very difficult to say. Um, in the Ludvika, also the schools invite people from the industry, for example, to go to the industry and tell to all of them, what do you work as engineering? And then you have to go there and try to inspire, to, uh, yeah, 10 years old kids. 15 years old kids and tell them how wonderful it is to become an engineer or how wonderful are to learn mathematics because if you learn mathematics you will be able to explain many things and how mathematics are related to physics so for me this requires a very huge policy in education where you create a big plan that these visits become something more frequent than just once in five years or three years and to help parents to inspire the kids and teach that mathematics are not a headache it's something nice and beautiful so so that that's what i see so from my side i think what we can do is continue having this kind of chat and lectures try to inspire younger and if you have friends with kids talk about what you do and what you can do and that there are no boundaries everything can be done thank you professor um liana and thank you professor johanna it's a pity to have to to stop this very interesting conversation uh, but it's time to close our event. It was planned um, until 12.30 in Colombia, until 6.30 in Europe. So once again, I would like to thank you, um, you both, and also uh, Professor Angelique for um, ha uh, having been here, for uh, joining us uh, in this um, event for uh, sharing your time with us and your expertise, your experience and your uh, professional career. And also I think um, 
you have today you have inspired uh, an amount of people not just uh young women who want to be a professional professional engineer i think also a lot of young, uh, young men and and also a lot of people who is watching us and um i think it has been a very interesting exercise today uh, thank you also professor camilo for having um prepared uh, the event and also to the Faculty of Engineering in, uh, of the Universidad Nacional de Colombia for uh, giving us the possibility to have these spaces to empower women in STEAM in Colombia. So thank you, you all. I wish you all a, a nice evening in Europe and also a nice day in Colombia. And I hope this is one or this is the first uh, of a lot of uh, events and projects we can do together in this um, area. Thank you very much. And thank you as always students for, for thank you Laura, Camila and Marie for, for participating in the event. Thank you.